All right, you guys, I'm at the Goodwill bins. I actually just came out and I have a bag of goodies. So stay tuned. Hey, Bella Buddies, thanks for watching. All right, let's get started. All right, we are back at the bins. Let me know in the comments, do you like these types of videos? So as we go through the video, I am going to pop up screenshots of how I listed everything that I picked up during this haul. Um, I like to do this because it gives you guys an idea of my thought process when I'm at the bins, what I'm looking for, how I list things, and if anything has sold by the time I post the video, I will also share that as well. I don't think anything's sold yet. I just recently got these items up and not a whole lot of time in between getting them listed and sharing the video. I know a lot of people will wait to edit their videos and list the stuff early so that they can have some solds, but I just like to get my content out there. I don't find a whole lot in the beginning. That seems to be the trend for me. I get there and I'm looking and I'm looking and I don't find a lot and I start to feel like I'm not gonna find anything today. And then I find some treasures. So um, stay tuned, stay with me here. Uh, this is going to be about 35 minutes of looking through the bins. So another question for you guys that I have, would you prefer, I did pick up this watch. Um, it had a leather band on it. So I grabbed that and my husband will use the band for something. Um, but it wasn't like a high dollar watch or anything. So do you guys prefer if I cut it down to just really showing when I'm finding the items or do you like the extra content like this? Like I haven't found a single thing yet. Well, I did find the watch, but do you like to see this part where I'm looking and not really finding anything to see if you see something I missed? So I would love your feedback in the comments on what your thoughts are on that. And while I'm just kind of digging, I thought I would talk to you guys about a video that I did with Dad Planet. It was a collaboration video. Um, we met up at the bins and we both shopped separately and then we did our videos separately and we both post posted them the same day and we had you guys vote. But the cool thing is the videos turned out great. We both found some cool stuff. So definitely go and check out those videos. Check out the replays. Um, and if you're not subscribed to Dad Planet, definitely go check out his channel. He does a lot of Ben's videos, but he also has a lot of what solds like me. And I know everyone on my channel loves my what solds. Um, lots of good stuff. And if you're new to the channel, thank you for being here. My channel is mostly about items to be on the lookout for, items that you can hopefully buy low and sell for a nice profit. I do a lot of um, what sold videos where I share with you my bolo items and I share with you other people's bolo items. So be sure to check out the channel if you want to learn about items you might not be sourcing that you should be. Okay, so that looked like a plate. Some of those plastic McDonald's plates, right, specifically the Hercules, can be there. a big money bolo. So. Always look at those, but of course, if it's cracked like that, you're just gonna wanna pass that by. All right, we are heading over to another bin. And I personally do mostly hard goods. This was an awesome find. I can't believe it was so, still sitting there. Um, Daniel the Tiger, I believe is what it's called. And it's a little train. And I have a video over on my reseller testing Bolo products, my other channel of how that little train works, if you wanna check out that video. 
So what I do is I test my products on that channel and then I attach a video into my eBay listing. So down in the description of my eBay listing will be a video that shows how the item works and it also shows that the item works. This is, you know, a good way that if the buyer says to you, oh, I got the item and it doesn't work, you can at least say, well, it worked in the video. And that's not necessarily going to prevent them from opening an item not as described. But I would say that if you have that video in your listing, it's probably going to deter them from making up something, um, saying that it doesn't work when it actually does to try to get a refund because you've got proof in the listing. And a lot of times people buying toys for their kids or family members, they may not know how that toy works and maybe they wanna know how it works before they buy it. So that's another great reason to put a video in the description of your listing. All right, I did find quite a few of these little die cast trains. There's another tiger that goes with that set. So I picked up all of the trains. There were five total. So I just went ahead and made a small lot. Um, if you're new to my channel, I really, really enjoy selling toys, small toys specifically. Um, I lock them up or I sell them individually. This was pretty cool. It's a vintage scented doll. I was really, really hoping that was gonna be a big money bolo. It was gonna be something special, but it really was just, um, it was definitely vintage, but it wasn't super special. So nice bread and butter item. Cheap because it was uh, very lightweight, less than a pound. All right, so, um, oh, I think I just threw that back. Was that a Fisher Price? Oh, I might've messed up on that. Okay, our generation, that was a puppy dog with all of the little um, accessories. There's another train. So I will spend most of my time in the hard goods. I will, from time to time, check the book area. And sometimes I go over to the clothes and the shoes. I'm just, I'm, I'm over clothes. Uh, if you're new to the channel, I was a full-time clothing reseller. I started in 2005 and that's what I did. Just retail arbitrage, going into discount stores, buying clothing items, and that was my business. And I switched to hard goods probably four or five years ago, maybe closer to five now. All right, this bag of goodies here was a bunch of little Easter items. And I love smalls. And I found those two little figures in there. They're from Hallmark and they are definitely a bolo. So uh, it's a harder to find collectible item and they were just thrown in there with those other junky toys. Um, so that was super exciting when I found that, but I will pick up things that are in bags and I will look through them. Uh, I did not look through that one until I got home. I just kind of looked through the bag and was like, okay, there's enough there that I think I wanna get this. All right, so now I am over at another, uh, hard goods bin and I'm trying, I can't remember what I find here, but I do find some more stuff. I assure you that I just wanted to kind of keep all the footage in this video. All right, maybe I should have got that. I have one of these and mine has the foam around the handle and my foam is, or the padding, I'm not sure if it's actually foam, is so like I have it taped, but it is my favorite. I have another one and I never use it. I just don't, um, I should have looked that up. That looked like a maybe a Boyd's. I have another one, but I don't like how it feels in my hand. Do you know how you just get used to something? So I left that behind, but the tape dispenser might've been a good buy. I don't know how much those retail for, but it looked like a nice one. Sometimes I pick up supplies and stuff that I need at home. I almost bought this soap because it looked vintage, but I looked up comps and it did not comp out very well. I recently just sold some ivory soap. If you can find the vintage ivory soap, it's a great bread and butter item. If you can buy a whole bunch of them, you can get decent money. And typically you can find those things at thrift stores, garage sales for a dollar or less. And you know, they have pretty good margins. I think I sold three bars. I can't remember what I sold them for. I'll try to remember to pop up that um, sold listing from my eBay store. And if I forget, I apologize. All right, let's see what else we can find here. 
And if you see anything that I'm passing by that you would have picked up, let me know in the comments. I know that we all source for different things and that's why this is so fun. Um, if you guys like these types of videos and you like clothing, there is a great channel. It is called The Rural Squirrel. So go check out Kristen over on her channel. She does um, tons of bins collaboration videos. She meets other YouTubers at the bins and they um, see who has the best haul. So super, super fun. And she finds some amazing clothing and shoes. So you won't see clothing and shoes much on my channel, but you will see me digging through the hard goods. So check her out if you're interested in that. I did pick up those note cards. Um, I don't know if it was a good deal or not because those are kind of heavy and I have no idea what those retail for, but who can, I mean, you can always use note cards, especially in our business. Like I tape things to stuff to know which tote to put it in and different things like that. So I figured I could use those just as a personal item. I could probably maybe sell them. I don't know. I don't know what they sell for. Barbies. All right. Now, if you can find vintage Barbies, definitely pick them up. Uh, those look like they're newer. If they would have had clothing on, that might have been a good pickup. Or somebody that sells Barbies that has a bunch of clothes. It may have been a good pickup anyway. It, I probably could have bread and buttered that one over on Mercari without the clothes, but I passed it by. Sometimes I watch back and I'm like, why didn't I grab that? All right. It's just fun. That's what I would say about the bins. Sometimes you don't find like tons of treasures, but it's just fun. Let me know in the comments, do you guys go to the bins? If so, what is your main thing that you source? Oh, did you see that piece of train track? Maybe I should have got that because it looked like it had the little um, bar that goes down. I did pick up this, the little Thomas Herald helicopter. I usually don't pick up the train track because it's super heavy, but um, they are that piece right there that's kind of a, not just your standard piece. I probably should have grabbed that. People look for those items. Again, it would have been a bread and butter, but hey, it all adds up, right? Okay, these are little Fisher Price, um, oh, what do you call them? Zoo animals. And I found, hmm, I don't know, five to seven of those. I'll pop up the listing. I don't think I already popped it up of those. So I just lotted those all together. This is Bubble Guppies. Uh, it's kind of like Octonauts and the Wiggles. I, I think it's a discontinued cartoon. I could be wrong about that. But I don't see a lot of Bubble Guppies toys. And when I usually find them, I do pretty well with them. So I decided to pick up that party favor. It was lightweight, probably less than a dollar. That beach ball I did pick up. Um, if you can find the huge beach balls, the vintage really big ones, those are a big money bolo. The one I found was smaller, so it won't sell for as much, but still a great pickup for probably, I don't know, 50 cents, maybe 75 cents based on weight. Okay, you guys, this is a treasure. If this guy would have been in mint condition, I probably could have sold him for $100 or more. Um, I can't remember what he's called. I popped up the listing for you guys if you wanna scroll back and pause. Um, you can read the title. It was nothing I'd ever heard of. I used Google Lens to find it. It was incomplete, but I think I can still get 50 or 60 bucks for that with um, it being in the condition that it's in. So that was a super exciting find. It'll probably pay for my entire haul. Um, just a, a fun item that I had, I had no idea about it. I just, I'm like, this transforms. I'm going to take this with me. And it was kind of heavy, so it was probably a couple bucks, which is still, you know, really fantastic. There's one other item I find during this haul that I was really excited about. So stay tuned for that. Vintage games. So I will tell you that uh, there are um, eBay stores that will take games and they just buy them for the parts and they 
sell all of the replacement parts in their store. So let's say you have this hangman game and there's a part in it. And then you just keep buying the hangman game and then you keep adding the quantity. You just change the quantity. So there are people that base entire stores on just that. So they go out and they will see games that they already have listed and then they just change the quantity, which is great. Um, it's not for me. Uh, I have parted out games. I do part things out from time to time. One game that I will part out is caribou and if you can get it complete you definitely don't want to part it out because it's a big money bolo but if you get it and it's missing some of the balls or it's missing the key you can part those items out individually and i do have a video about how i parted one out and how i'll make more money doing it that way over on my reseller testing bolo products it is a great video if you want to learn how to part out a caribou game. So I've sold a lot of the items already and I still have some listed. Some of the items are, are more long tail. Uh, less people are looking for them, but like the key and the balls, those usually sell pretty quickly. And I'll explain more of that in that actual video, but I, I, I took it apart every piece and part i took it apart it was crazy i was unscrewing things so kind of a cool video i was like i'm just gonna do this i'm just gonna make a video on this and show people how to do it okay another channel that i have is sourcing with bolo buddies and i told you about the collaboration video that i did with dad planet where we um met at the bins and uh sourced and then we had a challenge and you guys voted. Well, that video footage was like 45 minutes and I trimmed it down to 20 minutes. So what I did is I took the original footage that's like 45 minutes and I put it on my sourcing with Bolo Buddies channel and I called it the Ben's Uncut. So I don't talk through it. You just hear the Ben's, but it's basically like you guys get the opportunity to just watch me dig. I don't pop up screen shares in that one. It is literally just quiet footage. You can hear people rustling around and you know the bell go off, but uh, nothing educational about it. Just pure entertainment of watching me dig. So check out that video and let me know in the comments of that video if, if you like that or if you prefer to have me do a voiceover and pop up how I listed everything. I know that most of you are probably gonna say you want the education and um, that's what I, I like to provide is education. But sometimes it's just nice to just watch and have no, um, no sound so that you can like look at the items and be like, oh, I would have picked that up or I wonder if she got that. So in that video, I don't tell you what I picked up you'll have to go and watch the other video on this channel to see what I ended up buying and how I listed the items. So I may do that some more where I um, actually edit the video and put it on this channel and then put the uncut version over on my sourcing with Bolo Buddies channel. I think that will be fun. So stay tuned for maybe more of that in the future. Gonna try it out. Gonna try it out and see how it goes. There's a pair of New Balance. Um, Again, I usually stay away from shoes. I, they're just not really my um, my thing. <laughs> I know tons of people do super well with shoes. And, you know, that's the great thing about being a reseller and selling used items. Not everybody likes to sell the same things. So you can go on YouTube and you can look for different channels that really like to source how you source, but you can also watch channels that source differently from you if you're looking to expand and grow your business in different categories. So YouTube is a wealth of knowledge. Definitely check out different channels for uh, different educational elements. All right, this one's a long one. I guess I'll ask you guys this as well, since I have you here and I'm just digging. For the Ben's videos, how long do you like the videos to be? 
15 minutes, 25 minutes, 35 minutes or longer. Let me know in the comments when you're watching Ben's Goodwill Outlet Ben's videos on YouTube, what's your preference on time? This is a great bolo. Now, I only found one of them, but if you can find the series of those books, oh my goodness, I have sold some for over $100. They are fantastic, and it's slipping my mind right now what um, they're called. Um, it's a series, but rewind, um, pause it on the screen share there, and look at the title. Uh, I think it's Cosgrove. Serendipity, that's what it is, Serendipity series um, by Cosgrove. They're little thin books. You wouldn't think they were anything, but if you can get the whole series or even like 20 books, 15 books, they are a big money bolo, very collectible. All right, and they're um, a, a children's book. Sorry, I didn't mention that. You could probably tell that from the title or the photo, I guess, on the top. Uh, textbooks, uh, all kinds of curriculum and children's books. What is that? Should I have got that? That looks like some sort of medical device. All right, you guys, speaking of medical devices, if something is a prescription item, if you need a prescription to buy it, you are not allowed to sell it on eBay. So stay away from those items. And if you want to know more about items to stay away from, I mostly talk about bolo items, items to be on the lookout for on this channel, but I have a new series that I'm doing on items to stay away from, items that people got suspended for or the items were taken off of eBay for some reason. So definitely go check out those videos, super educational, things I had no idea about. What I did is I asked my Facebook group members to share so it's real live things that have happened to real people. All right, that's just a bunch of little wood cars. They probably went with that train track there. And I did go ahead and pick up all of the wood cars and trains and I lotted those up as you saw. And then before that, I showed you guys an ornament. It was a Pier 1 pickle ornament. So I, I like to sell ornaments. A lot of times they're bread and butter, but sometimes you can find some, <laughs> look how cute that is. Sometimes you can find some decent ornaments that will go for, um, you know, 30, 40, 50 bucks. Sometimes they can go for over a hundred if you find the right ones. But a lot of them are gonna be in the 10 to $15 range, depending on what it is, but look them up. If you can find the old vintage ones, some of those are crazy money. So my Benz is $1.79 a pound and books are 59 cents a pound. All right, so they just brought out the new bins. That's why I showed you guys that. So these are new bins. I'm thinking I'm gonna find some treasures, right? Well, I did find one treasure. I consider it a treasure. It's a bolo item that I have sold on multiple occasions. The sell-through rate, I don't know what the sell-through rate is, but I will tell you that mine, when I list them, always sell quickly. So either I have them priced right or the sell-through rate is fantastic because they always sell. And it is an item that takes a battery and I do have um, demonstration videos over on my reseller testing Bolo products of how they work. So check that out. They're still bringing out the bins here. And what they do is they, they have to lock them down and they will not let you go to the bins until they say go or all right guys, something like that. So you kind of have to stand back and wait for them to tell you to go ahead and go. So what happened there is she didn't tell me to go and I didn't know that rule. So I thought I would share that with you in case you're like me and have not been to the bins a whole lot. All right. Let's see. We are going to get to this item, I assure you. And um, let's see. Nope. That's not it. Again, I always look in the little bags. I got two listings out of that. Again, Fisher Price little people, I'll pick them up. They're a bread and butter item, but they do typically sell. Sometimes they're long tail. That's one thing with um, toys, they can be long tail. 
but there's always somebody that will eventually pick it up because they need it as a replacement or their child's asking for it or they have, oh, here it is, here it is. You guys, it is a code a pillar, a Fisher Price code a pillar. And they're in, it's interlocking. It is a great bolo item. I think I sold one for around 50. It depends on how many links they have. Um, this is the smallest one I found. I'm guessing I'll probably get, oh, I don't know. I, I was thinking, I'll, I'll pop up a screen share of how I listed it. I can't remember how many uh, little different uh, pods it had with it. So, well, I don't have the head. If you noticed, I just found the body. So if you just find the body, definitely still buy it because you can sell them as replacement parts. But, oh, oh, maybe I should have got those little airplanes. Those look like little people, airplanes. Shucks. Sorry. Again, I had it in my hand and I sat it down. Okay, so back to the Caterpillar. Even if you can't find the main head and body, definitely pick up the segments that link to it because you can sell those individually. I do end up finding the head, I will tell you that, but wait until how wait until you see how long it takes me to find the head. It's unbelievable. I can't believe it was still sitting there if I'm being completely honest. I think it's kind of a bolo item that a lot of people don't know about it and people pick it up and they're like, "Oh, this is heavy." And they're at the bins, so they're like it's probably gonna, I'm gonna say I probably paid between, I don't know, it was maybe three pounds. So I may have played five to six dollars for that. But I'll probably sell it for 30 to 40 dollars. Depending. We'll see. I can't remember. All right little push cars, different things like that. There's a lot of stuff that I'm seeing now that I could have picked up. I will tell you that I have inventory, mountains of inventory because I buy in bulk a lot. I go to garage sales and I'm like, how much for all of it? And then I bring it home and I just can't keep up with the, um, I should have bought that. I can't keep up with the amount of stuff that I'm buying. So I really have no business being here at the bins at all. So trying to be a little bit selective, but I did pick up that um, CD. I don't know what it was. I haven't listed it yet. Um, it's funny. Do you see that doll, that guy right there? I went next door and there's a Goodwill next door. And after I left the Goodwill, I came back over and I did just like a super mini haul. I was only there probably 15, 20 minutes, just kind of looking through the bins one more time before I left. And I picked up, oh, I wanna say, there it is, you guys. I've got it listed for $41.25 plus shipping. That is my sale price. So I'm guessing I'll probably get between 35 and 40 for that one. So to me, I'm willing to pay five or six bucks for that. So I do have another video coming soon. It's just a mini haul. And it's gonna be titled like I went back in or something like that to show you that you can leave and come back and still find some items. I didn't find any big money treasures. I only spent probably $3 when I came back, but I will definitely make some money. So stay tuned for that little mini haul. So it's a super short video, but definitely found some stuff. So I did show you the Fisher Price Zoo animals. That was a little VTech, um, two little VTEC vehicles. And you see that little blue track? That goes with the VTEC. So I'm guessing somebody donated a series. There's some more of the track for the VTEC. I usually don't pick up the track, but um, I will pick up the little cars. They do have lights and sound. And, um, oh, there's another one. Oh, did I get it? Yeah, okay, maybe that was the one with I, that I put with the other one. It's hard to remember. Um, these I this video has been sitting in my phone. I actually did this video before I did the bins challenge with Dad Planet. So I uh, have just been putting off getting the items listed and doing the editing. So all right. 
So my favorite finds are the Caterpillar and that Transformer. So those two items were really, really good finds, especially since everybody had really already picked through the bins. There's another little turtle. So that went in the zoo lot. I found a whole bunch of those and they were spread out um, in different bins, which is kind of funny. You really got to look at all of the areas. That was a little Mickey Mouse. Maybe I should have picked that up. I probably should have searched it. Sometimes those replacement parts can do really well because people lose them. There's a lot of smalls in here. I, I'm thinking I probably should have just thrown this stuff in my cart. It doesn't weigh very much. That looks like a replacement maybe pillow. And those little Barbie items can, can do well, but it's very time consuming. Um, you got to take the time to research them. And unless you're a Barbie collector and know all about all the accessories, it can be very, very time consuming looking them up. This is another item that I'm like, should I have picked these up? They look like they came out of like um, a model kit, but I couldn't find any identify identification marks and they would have been impossible for me to look up. All right, did you guys see that knife? That is why I wear gloves to the bins. It's just sitting there. I probably should have taken that out and given it to the staff. I don't know, is there protocol for that? I did buy that little dinosaur, the red and black dinosaur. Some of those dinosaurs, especially like the Jurassic Park and Jurassic World, those can do pretty good. I picked up that little fruit scoop. I don't know, I was like, it's vintage. It doesn't weigh very much. I probably had a quarter in it. Um, yeah, and you know, another thing that I come across a lot is like those cheese graters. And I, I don't know, should I pull that stuff out and put it somewhere? What do you guys do? Let me know in the comments. I feel like I should have probably picked that up and put it somewhere. I think people are pretty careful when they're digging through here, but I could see somebody, you know, getting hurt. It's kind of scary. Oh, like there's a broken mirror. Should I have done something with that? It's at least down in this tote. But if you're just blindly not paying attention and stick your hand in things like that, that's dangerous. Dangerous. I've heard some other, <clears throat> excuse me. I've heard some other stories of things people have seen at the bins. And I'm like, that is terrifying. So I definitely recommend wearing gloves. I recently, um, I actually wore this glove over to the Goodwill and I put it in the top of my cart because I was shopping over at the thrift store and I grabbed my bag and I walked out without my glove. So I did order some new gloves from eBay. I kind of like the one I have on in this video, the padding on the, or the rubber on the bottom is a little bit thicker, but the new ones are super cute. I got a four pack and there's red and orange and pink and purple, I think. And I'm like, oh, well, this will be fun. I can switch up my gloves and super cute. There's another little Fisher Price koala bear. So again, just building my lot. And I probably would have picked those up even if it wasn't um, a set. I ended up finding, I think, six or seven of those. I probably still would have got them and then lotted them up with other toys, if not, because people do look for those. Some of them individually can do pretty well also if it's a harder to find item. So if you wanna take the time to look them up individually, you can do that. It does take more time. So you have to decide what's worth your time. There's another zebra and then another train. You guys saw those lots earlier. So I always put things in my cart that I'm interested in because if I decide not to get them, I can always throw it back in the bin. And I do that. I will fill my cart up and then I will kind of go through it and be like, eh, no, I don't really need this. One thing that I notice that I do is sometimes if things are inside of a tote, I just leave them in the tote. And really I should take them out of the tote because I'm paying for that tote. All right, I ended up spending $25 and two cents.